Hi, this is Doc Edwards with my friend Rochelle Lee, and we're going to talk today about the vestibular and proprioceptive system with children and how you can find out if your baby needs extra help. So one of the things that I do as a chiropractor, specifically when it comes to little ones, is understanding their sense of balance and where up is and, where, and helping them map out where their body parts are. And so what I wanted to do today was um, actually bring in an expert, uh, one of my, my very good friends. We've been working together for a while now. Uh, and we just like, when we get together, we just like, we get really drooly about what we talk about. And it's one of the reasons I love Rochelle so much. And so um, what I wanted you guys to be able to hear is from her perspective as, as a professional occupational therapist, national speaker, um, what it is that she does, how she helps with children and her little neuro hacks for babies too. Um, so we wanted to talk about uh, the, the two basic systems for the brain uh, for little babies as they develop. And so um, what are those, those two systems that you work with and how do we know if it's good for a baby? So the two main systems in like the base of your sensory triangle that you're developing for your kiddos is your proprioceptive system and your vestibular system. Your proprioceptive system is the system that tells you where your body parts are. So you have all these receptors in your muscles, joints, bones that tell you where you are in space. I like to give the example of when you get numbing done on your mouth and you're kind of constantly trying to tap it to find where it is because you're not getting that information sent up to your brain of where your tongue is or where your teeth are. Um, so you use that feedback to tell of touching it, trying to figure it out to, of the tactile system to compensate for the lack of proprioceptive system information coming in. And then your vestibular system does a little bit more information about where you are in space related to your, body, to your body and to gravity. So you're going to be able to have information as to whether you're upright, whether you're tipped over, where your head is in relation to your body and your um, getting that information from your uh, behind your ears and your cochlea and you have your semi circular canals which give you that information as the fluid moves in your head tells you where you are in space and allows you to be able to stabilize your body and balance and have postural control interesting cool mm -hmm. so how can you tell like if a baby is is on track for those kinds of development things yep so if they're getting enough good proprioceptive input you're going to see them move and not have to feel so much where they are it's normal for a baby to have to develop this system. It's still a system that we're de we develop really far into our childhood. And even as adults, we're still mastering it as we're working on balance and everything still. Mm -hmm. But if you're finding that your child either is very not wanting to move at all, they're very just sitting still, they don't move their body around at very much at all, or they're overly moving their body around and moving a lot in similar patterns to get that feedback to send up to the brain so they know where they are in space. Mm -hmm. He's giving a good example now. Say, I have to figure out where I am mm -hmm. um, initially, but if that becomes a pattern that doesn't decrease with time, then that's more of a concern. Sure. So, so that's one of the things that, that we look for are people um, will bring in children and they're either like seeking all that information. So the, the kids who like jump off of the tables and, you know, climbing up really high to jump off of things, uh, or they're the ones that are, um, you know, constantly like booming into things, you know, they're like the clumsy kids and they're, they always seem to be crashing and stuff because uh, they don't know where their feet are, right? Um, or you'll have the kids who are really apprehensive about doing that stuff. It's just too much. Um, we talk a lot of times about how the fight or flight system is tied together with that sense of where up is with the vestibular system. And that's called uh, the moral startle response. And there's another yes. one that, that you check out too. Yes, moral reflex is gonna be your startle response. It's, uh, it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to help you with protection. You hear a loud sound, you wanna cover. Um, but if you hear a loud sound repetitively, you don't want that to still be engaging. There's also fear paralysis which with, if you go through any sort of trauma or um, any extreme situations, the fear paralysis can come out and can elicit some of that um, over-responsive reactions to vestibular or proprioceptive input too. What's that look like, the fear paralysis? Fear reflex? paralysis is going to be a more extreme version of Moro. So if they startle, it's just kind of a quick startle. If you have paralysis, they actually get almost a freeze state and it takes them a while to kind of come back from the fear paralysis. Oh, wow. Okay. It's like a more extreme version of Moro. Now, one of the ways that we like working together, and this is something that for a lot of the parents that are in our office, we'll send their um, uh, activities home with them that they can do to work within a system. So like certain toys we'll make a recommendation on or 
uh, little games that, that moms and dads can play with their kids. Um, but Rochelle, actually, when you get to that extreme end, you, we work with some children who have special needs. She actually is a national trainer in something I find really, really fascinating technology called TheraSuit. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I do the TheraSuit program, TheraSuit method. It's a program that uses intensive strengthening and a suit called the TheraSuit to provide that missing link to the vestibular and the proprioceptive system by you put the suit on, you apply these bungees to engage different muscle groups to be able to tap into that proprioceptive system. So I'm giving them basically a big bear hug with all this information and they have to move within that pattern in the proper alignment to kind of give their body that missing link so that they can develop those skills like coordination and balance um, and bypass that brainstem mis miscommunication that's happening um, to to that upper cortex. Yeah. Huh. Drew That's... likes it. He's getting excited talking about their suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be. I mean, this is the, isn't this the best part about being a parent yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah. So I like, I talk all the time about how I've just neuro hacked the living Dickens out of forest. I'm going to be <laughs> yes. doing that with Phoenix and Charlie too, is that like one of the best things about knowing this about our children's brains is the ability to like make them into little, these little super beings that yes. are maximizing the potential inside of them. And I just, I just really love what we're going to be able to do together. Um, so if people have questions, if they want to get in, in touch with you, um, we talked about that we'd be doing evaluations together too and working together. Um, but if they want, if they want some more information specifically about what you're talking about, what's the best way for people to reach you? Um, I work at two different clinics. I work at John Hopkins All Children's Outpatient Center on Colonial in Fort Myers, and I also work at Because You Can um, LLC that's going to be opening um, on. Ooh, I'm 41 by uh, Bell Tower. So either of those you can reach out to. Um, also, TheraSuitTherapy.com. They have other providers in other areas because that's also a really great program to look into as well. Yeah, awesome. Oh, I guess one last thing is that I know I have a lot of other like pediatric chiropractors mm -hmm. who are looking for OTs to be able to yeah. work with. Um, do you guys have like... Um, training organizations or, or professional associations that, that if we had other people that wanted to find somebody who's trained like you are, uh, how would they be able to find somebody? Yep. So it depends what training you're looking for. If you're looking for the TheraSuit program specifically, you're going to go through TheraSuit LLC's company, um, and they'll have all the people who are trained in TheraSuit. If you're looking for sensory processing work, mm -hmm. um, going through AOTA, that's our training body, um, and they will have lists of who's trained in sensory processing, more like SIP training, um, which is like the furthest along of the sensory different programs. Awesome. So a couple different organizations. That's great. To reach out to, yeah. All right. Um, well, thanks again. Uh, if you guys have questions about this kind of stuff, I really love reading them. Uh, pop them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, like I said, uh, it's real easy to, to do that as well. Um, one of my favorite things for you to do is, is to share this information with other people that you think might need it. Uh, this is why we bring these to you every week. So um, we'll look forward to talking more about sensory development through the month. And until then, I hope you take great care. Thank you.